we are proud to announce that the 2012 Marion County Teacher of the Year is <laughs> Melissa Boomba. <laughs> And with that, we say congratulations to Melissa Boombach, Marion County's 2012 Teacher of the Year. Hello, and welcome to the Classroom Connection, the show that takes you inside Marion County Public Schools. I'm Kevin Christian, your host for this day, and coming up on our show, you're going to hear from each of this year's Golden Apple Teachers and from our School-Related Employee of the Year. Plus, we will introduce you to our Rookie Teacher of the Year, who's been in the classroom just two years. Up first, though, more from a pint-sized lady with big-time ambitions, our own Melissa Boombach. Now, earlier, you saw the announcement from the Golden Apple Gala. Now, meet her in a more personal way, where she's at her best in her classroom. Here's a closer look at our 2012 Marion County Teacher of the Year, Melissa Boombach. Hey, how are you doing? I just wanted to give you this golden apple for being one of our five golden oh apple my. teachers of the year. Oh my God. Congratulations, darling. Thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. It means the world, and that is my aim in being honored in this way that I can support other music teachers and tell them they do appreciate what we do, what we do is important, we're impacting students just as much as other subject area teachers. In the current funding crisis, music educators like Melissa Boombach have found themselves caught in an educational limbo of sorts. We are in name a core academic subject, but we're not funded or treated as such. We don't even see our students as often as core academic classes see our students in many cases. And what we do very much supports what goes on in the other classrooms. And so much of what we do includes math and science and reading and literacy. You may not equate do, re, mi with one, two, three or ABC, but you'd be surprised how much crossover education Boombach provides. We break down our rhythms like fractions. We study the poetry in our music and we analyze the structure of the sentence. Um, we study the anatomy and physiology of breathing. Every song that I choose has a lot of different purposes. The students love to ask me, why aren't we singing the music on the radio? And I tell them, I don't choose music because it's fun. That's not the purpose. If you do, that's a bonus. But I choose it because we learn from it, whether it's the rhythm or the text. And the Cuban folk song, we got to talk about Cuba's government. But what kind of country is Cuba? What is their government? <coughs> Communist government. So that means they don't get to own their own profits, their own businesses. Earlier we did a round, Haida, and we talked about Hasidic Judaism and their cultures. And some of the students had never heard of these customs before. So I use music as this window into another world. I love South African music. It's so much a part of their culture. And sadly, it's not as much a part of our culture here in the United States. So I bring in all these other cultures, and they realize this is part of us. I can communicate with somebody in another country through this music. I had Japanese exchange students come to my school, the last school that I taught at, and we sang a song together that we both knew. They couldn't speak the same language, but yet they did through music. Boombox Rosetta Stone isn't cheap, and she's had to be creative to fund it. Her husband has composed music so they don't have to buy sheet music. She's fundraised to purchase a piano, but her biggest windfall came from entering Glee's Give a Note competition. I decided that I was going to enter this contest meant to support music students, and we entered a video. Don't stop in our class. I propped my laptop up on top of the piano. I put the third row on a bunch of chairs and we filmed it in one class period. I filmed a couple of students doing interviews in front of a whiteboard. We crossed our fingers and hoped for the best. And when we found out we had been accepted, it was all the support from the community. Everyone, our friends, our family, our school that voted for us. And that's what made it possible. Don't stop believing that music is essential to every student's education. That $10,000 grant will grow an already active chorus program. We're constantly performing. We're out in the community all the time. We went to the Salvation Army Red Kettle kickoff and sang. We're going to sing at the new Tuscarillo Revitalization City Project. 
We've got all kinds of performances coming up. We're just so excited to get out in the community and show the students that they're part of something bigger than just our classroom. I can make the difference. I can make the difference. I can make the difference. Yes, I can. The Golden Apple program has been around for 22 years, recognizing our most talented teachers right here in Marion County. In that first group was a young lady that's as excited today about the Golden Apple as she was 22 years ago when she received her own Golden Apple. She is Sissy McMillan. Also, Paula Cannon joins us. Paula was a Golden Apple winner from the year 2000. Ladies, thanks for joining me today. They are both obviously well respected in this community and you're both also active with the Golden Apple Academy. But let's first talk about 22 years ago, Sissy, some group walked into your classroom, gave you a Golden Apple. What in the world went through your mind? I had no idea. They, they'd never done it. We, did, we it was kind of, and then they told you you had to make a speech. I mean, it, <laughs> they didn't know. They were, they were winging it as they went. Mm -hmm. And I can say today, I'm glad. It would, it, it would be very hard today. It's grown so much. It's just amazing. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Mm -hmm. Paula, you got your own golden apple 12 years ago in 2000. What goes through a teacher's mind when literally 20, 30 people burst into your room? And, and I know there's probably a little expectation, but probably more surprise than anything. More surprised than anything, when all those people walk through your classroom, you're, you've got all kind of thoughts going through your head like, I'm not worthy because there's so many great teachers out there. I'm just one of the whole group of them because we had great teachers at our school and all across Marion County. Now I'm part of this caravan or prize patrol, I call it every year, and, and we usually try to predict what the response is going to be. Sissy, I would think you kind of laughed and smiled real big. Paula, I would think you maybe teared up a little bit. True. Yeah? True. Yes. We still see that today, and you guys are on that caravan. What do you think, um, you know, when does it sink in for a teacher who receives one of those five coveted golden apples? Oh, I think it takes weeks. I think they're on such a, because everything happens so fast after they get the apple to get ready for the big gala, and I mean, the you know, the event, and it's just, they're on a whirlwind. And I remember, I know they still do it today. That you, I received letters, cards, flowers from mm -hmm. the community. It's just... It, it, and I always tell them, this is your time to shine. Because teachers, we don't toot our own horn. We don't hear a lot of positive True. like that. So I just tell them to enjoy it. Because like Paula said, I mean, they're one of many good teachers. But you have, you need that reinforcement once in a while. Mm -hmm. Paula, you've been active with the Golden Apple Academy. Tell us what that is and what its mission is. Okay, the mission of the Golden Apple Academy is to showcase teachers and show what good teaching we have in Marion County. Put it on a pe pedestal and show the community the involvement of teachers outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom. And I know you guys are involved with events throughout the year, but obviously you're a huge part of the Golden Apple event. You're pretty much everything backstage and, and off camera, if you will. Um, how has the Golden Apple program changed? Sissy, I'm going to toss that to you first because you were in it 10 years before Paula was. Well, when we first started, we had to figure out what we were and what we were going to do. I remember we got together and wrote a mission statement and try to decide and it's, it's sort of evolved and it's kind of fluid because as the needs of the community and the teaching teachers changes, we try to adjust to that. We try to add things that we see there's a need and sometimes we take something away that there's no longer a need. Mm -hmm. Now I've heard that the first one was hors d'oeuvres and cheese. And, and we got band-aids and I got a <laughs> whistle, a plastic whistle, you put your band-aids in? It just amazes me today, and, and um, even the first few years after that, uh, the teachers didn't know they had to dress up, they were going to be on the stage, and, and now, like, if you, uh, watching them Friday night, I think it was just amazing how nice everybody looks, and it's just so much fun to see everybody dressed up and enjoying themselves. Paula, your perspective? One of the best things for me is to see the community involvement in there, mm -hmm. to watch all of the people from the community cheering you on. That was just the best for me. That's a feeling that will never go away for me. I liken it to, to an Oscars type event where people really get all dressed up and it's a black tie affair and ladies have gowns on. Um, was it like that the first year, Sissy? Um, no. <laughs> we were at um, the Appleton in that little theater room. Mm -hmm. And you could only bring one guest. I mean, you couldn't even pay for another. Okay. And then we had the hors d'oeuvres afterwards. But it was still exciting because we had to do a speech. And, um, and I think it's been really exciting for me to kind of help create it and, and help it evolve along the way. And the 
best part of the whole thing is being part of a group of people that have such a diverse set of skills in such kindergarten to AP chemistry teachers. And I've never worked with a group that can get more done. You don't have to give direction. They just, it's just an amazing group of people. Now this year the Golden Apple did something it's never done before. Granted a, an honorary apple to our superintendent, Mr. Jim Yancey. What, uh, what was the thought behind that? Well, he has been so involved with us. One of the things the Golden Apple does is we, we meet with every superintendent since I've been involved with Golden Apple. And that way they get to hear people on the front line and what we're doing, how we're doing it, issues that we want to talk about and discuss. And I like that personal touch that we get with the superintendent. And uh, we noticed that Mr. Yancey has such a heart for our kids, for our teachers, Agreed. and we wanted to do something for him to showcase that. I haven't really seen him speechless very often, but I think that night he truly was speechless and, and, and completely honored with it all. Mm -hmm. You guys have been involved in this from the start, Sissy and, and Paula, for the last 12 years. You know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, when you look back on this, what, what do you want to see? You know, oh. what, you know what I want to remember? I want to remember that we sent the elevator back down to our new teachers, that we were their mentors. We've watched how Golden Apple has changed, the academy has changed within the last few years with new people coming on. Mm -hmm. We've got new creative ideas. One of the things we've done is become true mentors to new teachers coming into the profession, whether they come into our classroom and watch us, whether we're on the email with them or the telephone, or whether we do a workshop for new teachers, even experienced teachers. We visit each other and, and learn from each other as we're watching them in our classrooms. We have kind of have a running joke in our department that when a teacher gets a golden apple, they don't stay in the classroom for much longer. Um, they usually advance up to an administrative position or go to another district for whatever reason, but we're glad to see that the two of you are the exception. You've been around. Sissy, how long have you been teaching? This is my 32nd year. 32 years in education. Paula? This is my 33rd year in education. Wow. Tremendous. Congratulations to both of you. Thanks for all that you do for our kids, and thanks for what you do for our teachers through the Golden Apple Academy. Thank you. Appreciate you being here today. Well, four other teachers received their own Golden Apples a couple of months ago, making them the latest members of the Golden Apple Academy. Here's a glimpse of them in action, sharing their teaching philosophies. Hey, Allison, oh how are you doing, darling? Nancy, I'm good. You doing all right? <laughs> I am now. <laughs> Miss Briggs just got one of the five Golden Apple Teachers of the Year from Marion County. I love to teach. I have known from a very early age that this is my calling. This is what I want to do. Um, and I, I hope to bring that passion with me every day. And every day I learn something new from the kids. And that's, that's why I'm here, because I really, truly get something out of this profession and out of this career. What do you think a poetic heart would be? Kind? Think about poetry. There's, there's a look that kids get when they get it, and they are excited about it. They're, they can talk about it, and it's, I like to say that they're like mini breakthroughs, you know, and I, those are my favorite moments. Those are the moments that I know, okay, I did, I, I did my job. I, I've taught it. They understand it. They get it. And those are the moments that I cherish the most, and there, there are a lot of them, of course, but, but those are what I really remember about teaching. Allison Briggs remembers a friend at Bellevue High School who inspired her to do what she does now. I had a, a good friend who had dyslexia, and um, I was able to kind of see through his eyes what it was like to, to have a learning disability and to go through school, and I knew right then that, that special education was definitely for me. A short stint in Chicago showed her the North was not for her. I'm an Ocala girl. I'm a Southerner. I very quickly found that the winter was cold and harsh and <laughs> I um, missed my family and friends back home so I, I moved home. Originally an ESD push-in teacher, Briggs now has her own class where she combines reading and social studies. I love to bring interest to what we're reading because being a teacher of reading it's, it's difficult to motivate students and it's difficult to make sure that they're understanding what they read so to make sure that they are involved and interested in the text is hopefully something that, that I try to facilitate within my classroom. 
She does that by using both low and high tech tools, everything from handmade vocabulary dice to state-of-the-art LED projectors. I'm very blessed here at Shady Hill to have wonderful technology and I try to incorporate that in all of my lessons. I think that we live in a fast age and technology is a way to reach these students because that's what they're confronted with all the time. She's found an easy way to tell if her methods have worked. It's when it's time to leave class and usually they're packing up and ready to go that they look at me and say, can we keep reading? That's when I know, okay, this is good. teaching young children. Um, I worked with five-year-olds for 14 or 15 years and then moved up to first grade. I just love working with little kids and I hope that it shows. Moving up one grade level may not sound like much, but at this level, it's night and day. When you're teaching kindergarten, you spend a lot of time putting on band-aids and um, helping them tie their shoes, helping them learn how to solve problems. I was shocked when I started first grade at how much they could do on their own. They're very independent. They get their own work, take care of their work, um, help each other out. They know where everything is. They know how to get places, um, how to gather their supplies and take care of their work, and they're just much more independent. Teachers are always looking for innovative ways to teach concepts, and while Lori Conrad's contraction OR is innovative, it isn't original. I stole that idea. Um, I'm just always looking for fun ways to teach skills because I want the kids to have a great time while they're at school. I want them to love learning. And so this was the most fun way I found to teach contractions, and so that's what we did. It's ironic she uses surgery to teach contractions, considering that's what turned her away from her original career path. Right after I got out of school, I thought I wanted to be an orthodontist. So I went and visited a couple of offices, and I passed out. Didn't do, do so good with the blood. So then I, you know, was thinking, what do I like? What do I want to do? And I loved working with kids even when I was young. I taught Bible school, helped with Sunday school, and I babysat. And so that's kind of how I found my way, I guess. And I do like it. I love it. I feel very blessed that um, I really am content each and every day um, just to be working in my classroom. The kids are the reason that you smile every day. Um, they just, they come to school every day ready to learn something new. They come in with unconditional love, you know, they, they're, they're just excited about everything that you do. When you make a mistake, they forgive you. <laughs> And um, it really is just a joy, you know, it, that's the best part, being with the kids each day. Congratulations, we're Thank so proud you. of you. This is one of our five Golden Apple teachers in Marion County, one of the five finalists for Teachers of the Year. That I was going to teach. Um, I had several opportunities to not pursue that avenue. Um, I started as a broadcast journalism major. There was a small stint that I was a theater major and I thought well I'll just act because that would let me be a whole bunch of different characters and not maybe have to be myself every day. But I knew that this is where I was going to end up. My mom is a teacher, my aunt is a teacher, my, my grandmother I believe was a teacher. Um, I have so many influences um, you know throughout my my years growing up that I just I knew that's what I was going to do even though I didn't plan to do that. Any teacher will tell you being in front of students is a performance so Stephanie DeVilling's theater background comes in handy. They ask me all the time do the voice do the voice um, and in the sixth grade I would use a British accent um, you know something crazy that I learned along the way and I would read scripted material that would have otherwise been boring or monotonous or you know something that they may not have paid attention to. I use that voice uh, to kind of keep them focused and keep them interested. The prompt explains what you will write about and gives you ideas for planning your writing. You may not use a dictionary. If you are unsure of how to spell a word, do the best you can. And then of course, you know, in, in teaching language arts, you get the opportunity to teach 
drama as a genre, so we've, we've acted out some things in class. DeVilling's diverse background didn't start in college. It goes all the way back to elementary school. I am a product of, of varying education. I went to a private Christian school up through the fourth grade. I was homeschooled fifth through eighth grade, and then I went to Vanguard High School. Coming from a private Christian school to, to my dining room table and then being thrown into the sea of public you know, high school, I was scared to death, um, but thank goodness I had some really amazing teachers and guidance counselors that helped me make that transition. Um, and I, I remember specific instances where I thought this is a bad idea, I should not be here, I don't belong here. She had those same feelings when she first arrived at Fort King, but a guidance counselor again changed her perspective. I didn't want to be here when I moved. Um, I was comfortable at a different middle school and because of rezoning and involuntary transfers and, and classroom units being reassigned, um, I, I was dumped at Fort King and I, I really did have a, a bad attitude about it, um, but it, the school, the campus grew on me. Um, I met our, one, our, one of our guidance counselors and, um, and he just completely blew me away with his, his passion and emotion and sensitivity and an intuition um, in the lives of the students here. One of the first things I noticed about her, I guess my, one of my first attractions to her, was her ability with, in the classroom, with the children. My heart is not in my words, my heart is in these desks and these people and these little darlings. Um, and my husband's crying and now I'm crying. <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Joe. Mr. Moses. All right. <laughs> it's a long way from Pine Oaks now, buddy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I learned a lot about myself and uh, doing the portfolio, so it was, it was a good adventure. It, it, it actually, I think it made me a better teacher. An object in motion tends to do what? Stay in motion. Unless acted upon by an outside force. All right, so let's demonstrate. I have a repertoire of, uh, repertoire of uh, activities that I think help the kids uh, learn the material. And I've come, become pretty competent with the, with the uh, content. And I continue to learn and study the content and try to come up with different new ways to uh, deliver it to the kids so that they can perform. Often his class is a performance of science concepts. Sneak previews are not allowed among students during the day, but rave reviews at home are the goal. If you can't make science fun, then you probably shouldn't be teaching science at all. And my key is, if I can get what I do in the class to the dinner table, then I have succeeded. And, I, and I, that's my, my mission every morning, is what I do in class, I want them talking about it at the dinner table. If his coworkers are any indication, it's working. I have uh, Coach Johnson's uh, RPE coach. His daughter is in my class, and uh, he said, she came home and she wanted to know if we got any baking soda and she used up all the baking soda and then she, she used up something else and she, <laughs> he was laughing, what are you doing in the, in the class? Because she's always coming home trying whatever we do in class. And well, that's my, my goal. One interesting note, the last teacher you heard from, Mr. Joe Moses, actually taught the next teacher you're going to hear from when she was just a fifth grader. So these apples come from the same tree. He was my first male teacher, and at first that was, I mean, I was in fifth grade and it was new for me, but he made such a difference. I looked up to him as a father figure, so that was really exciting, and he, he had a passion for teaching. He loved science, and that's, I know he teaches only science, but whenever he taught me, he taught all of the, the subjects, but that was really exciting because he had such a passion for teaching. He's one of the people that helped mold me, I believe, to who I am today. Let's find out more about Rebecca Ciroli, Marion County's 2012 Rookie Teacher of the Year. Can you believe that he forgot how to blend all the sounds together? Whoa. I know! 
and so he needs your help. I love what I do, and I have a real passion for teaching. It's something I've always wanted to do. Nobody in my family was teachers or anything, but I've been in Marion County my entire life. I was in school from kindergarten to 12th grade in this county, and a lot of it had to do, I believe, with the interactions that I had with my own teachers and the positive experiences that I had. And I saw a difference that my teachers made in my life, and I thought I wanted to do that one day. So it's just, I mean, I can't remember a time when I didn't want to do that. Elena? Kind of like a bucket except a different name. Yep, that's right. A pail is kind of like a bucket. Very good. All right, next word I want to hear all of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. What's the whole word? Male. Male. Good. In only her second year in the classroom, Rookie Teacher of the Year Rebecca Ciroli is still learning her craft and expects she always will. I think no matter how old you are, how long you've been teaching, there's still always learning and growing that has to be done. I mean, and I don't think anyone has it pegged. I mean, it's something that is different. Teaching is different for every person and they have their own way of teaching. And I just, I mean, I wake up every morning to see those kids walk in the door. And so it's just so exciting for me and I know that they love learning too. Orange table, are you up to the challenge? Yes! Okay, green table, are you up to the challenge? Yes! Yeah. Okay, here we go. Where? Good job. There. No. When they do learn something, that's her payoff. Whenever I have those aha moments from kids or when that light bulb in their head, I see it goes on and they say, oh, I finally get it. That's so exciting for me. And so when I go home and I think about that, like, that kid got what I was trying to teach them. It just makes it all worthwhile, even if it only happens from five kids a day or just one. It's, it's that that I go home and I get so excited about. Oh. What does CH say? Let's do our little movement we do to help us remember what CH says. Cha-cha-cha. Cha-cha-cha. Rookie teachers have no more than three years' experience in the classroom. And again, congratulations to Rebecca Ciroli, our 2012 Rookie Teacher of the Year. While we're recognizing the best, we're going to have to add Marquita Jones to that list. She is our 2012 School-Related Employee of the Year. Now, that's the highest honor for a non-teaching employee in our district. She's the receptionist at Fessenden Elementary, the very school she attended as a child. She assists teachers with advanced learning needs in small groups a function that is invaluable to any teacher. This young lady represents several generations of Fezzeden graduates. How does that make a person feel to be a part of this school's history? I just come from Fezzeden, so, I mean, you know, I was here. I was safety patrol, president of safety patrol. Um, Mr. D, who's a third grade teacher now, he was my fifth grade teacher. So when I wanted to, well, he was excited because one of his students won. So um, I got a lot of culture, a lot of love for school here. It all started here. And it just went on to middle school, high school, and college. Then and now, not only was she a part of this school's prestigious history, but also forging her own history with this great honor. And it, just, it just means a lot that who I am as a person and what I do That's here and what I do outside of here um, means something. Like it was recognized, like I do good, like I, I'm giving back. So it just really meant a lot. So when it's all said and done, how does one feel with such great recognition of their achievements? It was, it was amazing. Like I, I would have never guessed it. I would have never thought this would happen. Marquita earned a bachelor's degree in accounting and finance. Her colleagues say she's cheerful, professional, and well-respected. And speaking of professional and well-respected, well here's our own superintendent with some tips for students and parents in this month's Superintendent Spotlight. Hi. The photos you see behind me are from last year's Golden Apple Teachers of the Year. We'll be replacing them with this year's Golden Apple Teachers of the Year and Rookie Teacher of the Year. So congratulations to all of our teachers for having an outstanding year. Finally, I want to just talk a little bit about the FCAT. I know I hate to bring us back to reality, but if you remember in December, the State Board of Education, that's the State Board of Education, increased the cut scores for the FCAT in the end of course exams. I want to remind everybody that this month through April is a key time for your students to get assistance if they need it. So please, if they're offering assistance, 
to get our students ready for the FCAT, your student ready for the FCAT, please take advantage of it. That's really important. Finally, recently we've had some conversation about student behavior. I just want to remind you, if our students come to school, do their best, do the right thing, and treat others the way they want to be treated, they won't have any problems here at school. So this spring, please remind your student to keep doing the right thing, study hard, work hard, do their best, and we'll all be successful, especially our students. And we'll all be there to help our students each and every day. Thank you. And with that, we wrap up today's show. Thanks for watching, and parents, remember, be there for your child every day.